Hi guys, this is Jody. Today we're going to go over um, a little tutorial on how to make a soft sofa cushion. Um, we're going to be using some extensions to do this. Uh, I've got quad face tools, sub D, and vertex tools that we're going to be focusing on. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just get started. To make this cushion, we're going to start with a rectangular um, face here. I've got an 18 by 22 inch rectangle and we're going to push pull this up to about four inches. And um, one of the things I do want to show you is I am using this uh, toolbar here. This is a toolbar that I created using the extension toolbar editor. Basically what I've done is I've put in my favorite tools from quad face tools, my favorite tools from sub D, and my favorite vertex tools in here so that they're all in one spot so that there's a little bit less clutter on my screen. Um, I also do have some hotkeys set up. I will be uh, switching between regular and x-ray mode, but I have set that up to um, map to a hotkey on my keyboard. And I also have um, some visibility tools up here from Mr. Hyde that allow me to see different aspects of uh, my model as I'm modeling things. So um, let's go ahead and get into this. I've got my cube, and if you remember about sub D, everything that you do has to be part of a group. So we're going to go ahead and select the whole thing and make it a group. And then we're going to go into our context and start making modifications. Now, if you remember, when we turn sub D on, um, what it does to your model is every time that there is a line or an edge, it's going to divide that line in half, depend or you know depends on how many iterations you decide. If you make it higher, it's going to add more information. Here's Mr. Hyde shows you the um, hidden edges. And if you make it less, it goes like that. So I usually just keep it down to the lowest iteration. I don't need more detail than that. Um, but we are going to start manipulating this and creating some more specific shape to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of these lines, one of these edges, and I'm going to ring select so that I get all the edges along that ring. And then I'm going to use this tool here from Quad Face Tools, and I'm going to Modify, you can make it four or three lines that you add. It's up to you. I like it to be three for now. Um, go ahead and do that. And we're going to do that in all three directions on this cube. Just modify it a little bit depending on what looks good to you. Okay, now when we turn sub D on, you can see that we're holding our shape a little bit better. Um, that looks pretty good. It already is starting to look a lot softer, but we're going to make some even better modifications to this. So, and you just have to remember when you're using sub D, you want to make all your modifications to your geometry without that turned on. You want to leave that turned off. Um, otherwise, your modifications don't, um, they don't stay. So um, because I know that this is a symmetrical item, you know, it's going to be the same on the left and the right and the front and the back. I'm going to go ahead and just delete all but one quarter of my geometry here. And then we'll put it back in so that I'm only doing it one time as opposed to doing it four times. So here we've got our shape. And I'm going to turn on x-ray mode. And then I'm going to turn on vertex tools. First thing that I'm going to do, and this is why x-ray mode is helpful because you can kind of see everything. Um, I'm going to select all these vertices in the corner here. Um, I always use x-ray mode so I can make sure I've got the proper vertices selected, but you can also come over here and you can check and see uh, how many vertices you've selected. Because if you have, have x-ray mode off and you make that selection, It's very possible that you accidentally select things in the back. I didn't that time, but you can see that got selected and I didn't mean to. So I turn x ray mode on. I watch this information over here and make sure that I'm not over selecting things. I'm going to select just those ones in the corner and I'm going to draw them in and soften that corner a bit. Okay. Now we're going to do it along the edges here. I'm going to select up here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to shift select, 
get those vertices at the bottom over there. And I can see that I accidentally selected that, so I'm going to shift shift option on the Mac keyboard to unselect that one. And then I'm going to pull those to the right a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. I'm going to select, try to line things up a little bit so that I'm selecting the proper things. That and shift select the ones on the bottom. And we're going to draw those in this way. Okay. That looks pretty good. When you're in vertex mode, if you hit the space bar, it will kick you out of vertex mode into regular selection mode. Um, I'm going to turn X-ray off. And I'm going to select, go back to vertex, and we're going to select x-ray. I'm going to pull these ones out this way and give the front of the cushion a bit of a bulge. You might think that's a pretty drastic pull right there, but um, one of the things you notice about sub D is that it, you often have to make a larger, a more drastic change than what you think to get the soft result that you're looking for. So we'll take a look at that in a second. And then I'm going to select these ones over here. And I'm going to draw, I think, that one too. And I'm going to draw them out a little bit as well. So already you can see that I've created a nice shape here. We can check it and see how it looks. So far, that looks pretty good. Now we need to pull the top up so that it's got a little bit of a cushiony look to it there. So you can, when you're not in vertex mode, you can select the face and then select vertex, and then all the vertices that are associated with that face that you selected will be highlighted. And I'm just going to draw all four of those up a little bit. Good. And then I'm going to take this edge, these two right here, and I'm going to pull them up a little bit. These tend to be a little fluffier in the center. And then I'm going to do the same thing down over here. Pull this one down, not quite as much because it is going to be sitting on the sofa bottom. That looks pretty good, I think. So when I turn sub D on, we'll go out of vertex mode. Got a nice soft shape here. I think that's pretty good. Sub D off. Select the whole thing by triple clicking, and I'm going to mirror. I'm going to mirror this along the green axis, and then the whole thing together mirrored along the red axis. Okay, there's our cushion. Turn on sub D, and that looks pretty good to be honest. Um, it's nice and soft. I can make some changes if I want there to be, um, you know, I could I could go in and if I wanted to select this ring here all the way around, this loop I mean, select this loop all the way around. I can adjust things like the crease if I wanted to make this a sharper edge up at the top, I could do that. Um, or I can leave it as it was, or maybe a little bit. Okay, we use Mr. Hyde and we turn on the hidden geometry. We can see all of our subdivisions there. If we want to up the iterations, we can do that. And then we can turn off the edges too. So I don't honestly, I don't really like that crease right there. I'm going to take that off. I don't like that. Reselect all these things. Not the look I'm going for. Crease. I'll pull this back down to zero. But you have the option if you decide you like that.
depending on what your cushion is supposed to look like. There we go. That looks pretty good. I like it. I think it's a good cushion. It's nice and soft looking. Um, I'm going to make another video that shows you how to put a little bit more detail into this and make it a little bit more realistic. Um, so it just depends on how much effort and energy and realism you're looking to put into your models. But plop this cushion onto a um, onto a sofa and you've got, you know, looks pretty good to me. So if you um, are interested in learning more about how to use these tools, um, you can always sign up for some one-on-one -on -one tutorial training. Um, I'd love to help you out with any project that you're working on, and um, I will see you in the next video. Thanks.